Hello, and welcome to our show for the love of animals. We're so glad you joined us today. Make sure all the fishermen in the house gather around because we have some fish tales for you today. <laughs> I'm Darlene Pickford. I'm Greg Bauer, and we're going fishing today. Yes, we are, Greg. <laughs> but before we do that, uh, tell us about some upcoming shows. Okay, we have two shows of interest coming up. Uh -huh. One on pit bulls, okay. which we know our viewers will be interested in. And, right. and then our Christmas show is coming up oh. before too long. So uh, anyway, you you <laughs> tempted us with this fish. What's going on today, Darlene? Well, you know, Greg, if I would say our fish tales are about flounder, our, our angel fish or something like that, being a Georgia girl, I could tell you about that. But these are two fish that I know very little about except preparing for this show. So why don't you introduce our guest and these two strange fish tales. <laughs> okay. Well, we're happy this afternoon to have with us uh, Chase Gilbert and Brad Richardson from uh, who are students at Murray State University in the uh, Department of Biological Sciences, the Aquatics Division. And they're going to tell us today, uh, Chase is going to be talking about some a fish called the silver carp. Silver carp. And Brad is going to be talking about a very unusual <laughs> fish called the alligator gar. Would you repeat that now? <laughs> the alligator gar. Not an alligator, but a fish. <laughs> but it looks like an alligator. <laughs> oh, strange tale. <laughs> so, we're so happy you, you fellows are with us today. And uh, well, let's start uh, quickly, Chase. Um, how did you get interested in the silver carp? Well, um, it's a fish, so I'm, I'm interested in it. Okay. Just for that fact. But um, the silver carp is a, it's a really unusual fish to be found in our area. It was introduced. But. Um, they have really unique anatomy and behavior for our area, so okay. uh, that's the general interest. Well, what, what made you get interested in fish in general from in biology? I find fish very interesting because of their evolutionary history. Like, that's probably the most interesting thing I find about them is how they've developed over time. And you get so many different species in so many different ways. It's really diverse. Interesting. And Brad, how did you get interested in um, the fish alligator in gar? <laughs> um, I actually uh, transferred here from junior college, and uh -huh. my first semester I started working with my professor now, Dr. Flynn, in uh -huh. his lab. Mm -hmm. And he had a graduate student that was just starting an alligator gar project. Oh. So yeah. as I went out with him and helped him more in the field, just interest grew, and I've been working with him ever since for about the past two years. So. Okay. All these strange things here in <laughs> western Kentucky. <laughs> and we're, we're going to hear more detail about oh, the yes. alligator gar a little bit later on in the program. But, Chase, let's uh, go back now to the silver carp. Uh, tell us about the silver, silver carp, excuse me. What is it? Well, um, it's, uh, it's usually depicted as a deep bodied fish. It, um, most of them have rather large heads. That's what a lot of people tell me when they want to, when I ask them for a description of what they saw, they tell me it's all, you know, big-headed fish. But, <laughs> okay. Uh, they look like a, a pretty typical fish, what you would think of. They're uh, related to minnows and, and carps, obviously, but uh, they're... Where did they come from? Um, the, the silver carp originally uh, originated in the so southeastern part of Russia and um, oh, really? along the coast of eastern China, not necessarily a coast, but from the, probably the center of China heading east. That was their native distribution. Of course now, they're located in, you know, internationally almost, and almost, you know, probably more than 80 different countries, so they're very widely distributed now. Most, you know, that's all introduced. Okay. And what is their biological background, if you will? Where do um, they come from? Where do they fit in the biology scheme? Well, mm -hmm. uh, silver carp are um, primary consumers. They consume mostly, for the most part, they're primary consumers. So they uh, they eat a lot of phytoplankton. You know, they're filter feeders. They eat a lot of phytoplankton and they filter detritus out of the water. And they don't usually target fish for a food source. They usually smaller things like zooplankton. Some some zooplankton, um, but. Uh, a lot of people use them in aquaculture, like in the U.S. They were brought over here because uh, they're good at controlling water quality, like increasing the water quality, like algal problems or um, just clearing up water. No, no, they are. You mean making it cleaner or yeah, aerating? Well, not aerating. I would just um, removing al excessive algae because that's oh, what they're. Oh, okay, okay. Well, now you know we're noted for our fishing here on Lake Barkley and Kentucky Lake. 
if you were fishing in those lakes, would could you possibly catch a silver? Definitely. And now, is this a new thing, or has it been around in our area for a long time? It's, it's become more prevalent lately, but they've been around for uh, a number of years. It's just become more of a problem as they become a, adjusted to our environment. What, what's the major problem that they're having, that they're causing, though, in by being part of the lakes? Well, that's some of the stuff we're, we're trying to evaluate, and other people have found that um, these fish consume large amounts of, you know, like I said, phytoplankton, which is primary food source for a num just about all fishes that are at, you know, young okay. age, mm -hmm. and um, so it's causing some competition, we think, and uh, you know, for fishermen on the on the lakes and the rivers, it's, it's kind of hazardous because of their their behavior. So it, it can cause dangerous situations in some cases. We're well, going to see a little bit of that uh, a little bit after the after the break. Uh, it was an interesting video, but at the same time, they uh, they also uh, cause the uh, the water, if you will, to not be good for other fish. In other words, they consume a lot of the things that other fish would also eat. Is yes. that correct? So, so so it could change the balance of the number of each species that are in a particular water source. Is yeah, that it could potentially. Oh, okay. It could because they're consuming the same food sources as a lot of the other, you know, prime um, prey fish. You know. Is it edible? Yes, the silver carp is edible. Um, they're actually one of the most heavily produced fishes by weight in aquaculture in the world. Um, and, I don't uh, see them on the menu at any <laughs> Yeah, our, uh, our area has a pretty negative disposition toward eating the fish. Uh -huh. I guess it's just because they're not native, but... Um, exactly. That, that's. And we understand that there's a lady out in Wycliffe now who is collecting silver carp to ship them to the Orient. Yep. That's, um, she just opened, I think, earlier this, earlier this, this spring. Year. Yep. So. Now, there, you mentioned the, the carp. Of course, we know about some of the other members of the carp family. The, well, I believe the big head and the black carp. And yeah. so these are all Asian carp, I yeah. think, which means they came basically originally from Asia. Yeah. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. okay. There's a lot of, most of the carp that we have here originated in Asia, I would, I would say. Mm -hmm. some, some are Eurasian, where they were introduced in Europe first, and then from Europe introduced here, like the grass carp. How big do they get? It's a good question. <laughs> um, I've seen them greater than 20 pounds, so mm. quite large. Okay. Their relatives, the big head carp, can get. I've seen them. I've seen them in person as large as 50 pounds. I've never seen silver carp in person over 20. I've just seen pictures. Uh -huh. Are they saltwater? Or I assume freshwater. Yeah, they're freshwater. But yet they're all over the world. Yeah. Hmm. That ought to be an interesting story, trace their <laughs> migration. <laughs> and, and we understand that the uh, great uh, care is being taken to keep them from getting into the Great Lakes water system. Yeah, they've, they've discussed setting up some barriers and closing a few dams, which is a big economical situation when you close a dam. So. Oh, yes. So there's, there's a lot of work going into preventing that. I don't think the Great Lakes needs another problem. <laughs> yeah, they're, okay. they're already knocking at the gates. They've set up uh, bubble nets and things like that to try to deter them, but okay. they're still knocking right at the gates, so we'll see Are what they? happens. Okay. Ooh, I can, I can see now why so many people might be interested in this particular species of fish. Okay. Well, I think we want to take a short break for a moment here. We're just getting started and learning a lot of interesting things about the, the silver These carp. fish and, tails, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and we want to watch a happy tale for a little cat by the name of Dude, and I say little in quotes because <laughs> little does not describe Dude. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so give a listen. I think you'll enjoy this. This is a happy tale about a cat named Dude. Dude loves going out in the morning, but when he comes home in the evening, he goes straight to his basket. As you can see, he now shares his basket with his other furry friends, Marvin, the new kitten, and PJ, the mother, who all in the house. We think it's funny how all the cats look comfortable in the basket, but Dude can fill it up all on his own. 
Hello and welcome back. We hope you're enjoying <laughs> our fish tales today. Uh, we're not trying to see who has the biggest fish or anything like that, <laughs> but uh, a couple of interesting varieties of fish that uh, are in our area. Uh, the silver carp, carp and, and the alligator garn. Alligator garn. We've right. kind of gotten a good idea about the silver carp, and then a little bit later we'll take a look at the alligator garn. But right now we'd like to show a little video, uh, about a four minute video, on the silver carp and fishermen in the Wabash River in Indiana. And this came to us from Indiana Outdoor Adventures, and we'd like to thank them very much for their willingness to share this uh, video, which is on the YouTube. And they have a website you'll see on the screen during the video. So Here, let's watch the video. You can't keep your head on a swivel. I mean, I look up and he's getting oh. wet. video. That's not like your Sunday afternoon down on Lake Park. No, it is, it is not. <laughs> so much for the silver cart. <laughs> yeah, that was a great video. Uh, 
Chase, if some of our people would like to get more information about the silver carp, where can they find it? Um, fishbase, uh, I think it's .org. I think it's fishbase.org. It's probably probably a relatively useful, inf you know, informative site that okay. pretty probably good for anybody. Okay. And that website is up on the screen for our viewers. Yes. And, uh, yeah, so. all you have to do is you just type in the name of the fish you're looking for, and you can find out just anything about almost any of the fish. Okay. Okay. Okay, Mom, All right. we've taken care of the silver carp. Brad, let's go to the alligator gar. <laughs> Tell us about the alligator gar. Uh, unlike the silver carp, alligator gar are actually native to this area. Oh, uh, they originated down around the Gulf Coast of Mexico. Uh, there are seven species known worldwide, and they are all in North America. Uh, four species are found around this area. There's the long nose, short nose, spotted, and alligator. Uh, they are prehistoric. They've been around since the dinosaur age. What? Um, historically, they could reach approximately 10 feet in length. Today, you don't see that nearly as much. It's usually seven or eight feet. So, mm -hmm. okay. And why are they called the alligator gar? They have a striking resemblance in their snout and head to an alligator. Okay. Uh, there was a picture I wish I could have brought <laughs> that actually shows an alligator that, gar that's been caught, and next to it, there's a picture of a crocodile coming out of the water, and it's a striking resemblance. So. Okay. Well, that's interesting. Well, then, what what do we do with the alligator gar? I mean, it's here, and is it edible? Where, where did it come from, and that sort of thing? Um, right now, there's not a whole lot being done with them, aside from conservation and trying to reintroduce them to areas. Um, here in Kentucky, they were about 50 years ago, they were completely extirpated, so they're locally extinct in the state. Okay. okay. Uh, people thought of them as a bad fish, so they just started killing them off, and we realized that was a bad idea. So now we're reintroducing these guys. There was a program started in 2009 by the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife. Okay. And they've been doing a five-year stocking period, and they're hoping to keep this going. But they are an edible fish. Why was okay. it a bad idea to get rid of them? What, what happened there? In most systems, alligator gar serve as an apex predator. So they're the very top of the food chain. There's not, there's not really anything that preys on them. Okay. So they're able to prey on other species to keep them in check. Okay. So oh, that you okay. don't have smaller fish getting into such high population abundance that you start getting stunted growth, so all of your fish are really small. Okay, okay. okay. And I'm sure the fishermen like that idea. <laughs> I think they've gotten to the point where they're accepting alligator gar reintroductions a lot more than the silver carp being around. So <laughs> they're hoping the alligator gar will help with that problem too. Well, and, and they seem to be a favorite of the bow and arrow fishermen. Yes, uh, bow fishermen are really taking to gar in general, especially alligator gar as they start to grow. Um, right now, there's not really a major fishery for them mm -hmm. as they're somewhat protected in a lot of areas. But as they start to grow, Kentucky is hoping to bring that into a sport fishery and hope everything goes a little more as planned this okay. time. All right. Now, what have you found most interesting in the research that you've done with alligator gar? Um, a lot of my research so far has been on the actual morphology of the fish. Okay. Um, as, they're, as juveniles, all four species look extremely similar, aside from long nose gar. They're pretty simple to mm -hmm. weed out from the other three. But uh, we were looking for a simple way that you can measure the fish somehow to f tell exactly what species you're looking at. And we've actually come up with a couple measurements on the head that seem to work pretty well. Okay. Now you mentioned that they can, you typically see them maybe seven to eight feet long. How much do they weigh? Uh, the, I believe the Mississippi record right now weighed in excess of 350 pounds. Good what? heavens. And he was <laughs> caught bow fishing as well, so. Oh. Well now, how big would a 350 pound? <laughs> um, he was about eight feet, nine inches, I believe. Wow. So he was, he was getting up there. With a bow and arrow. With a bow and arrow. <laughs> Uh, Goodness. Are they dangerous with the snout and with the teeth and so on? Is that something you, if you're trying to land an alligator dog, <laughs> do you have, really have to worry about the, that, uh, the teeth? In the boat? Uh, um, those falling? teeth are needle sharp. I mean, they will get you. Mm -hmm. uh, usually it's not too big of a problem as usually they will close their mouth when they come out of the water. Uh -huh. So they can still whip around and get you, but you've really got to fight with them to get them mad at you. Okay, but, so but you don't have to worry so much about a tail like you do with an alligator or a crocodile? Not usually. They have a pretty strong tail whip, but usually whichever way their head is going, their tail is going to go the same way. Uh -huh. So if you can kind of sense that pretty quick, you can keep out of the way of it. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't think these fish are actively seeking out people. <laughs> <laughs> no, there have been no confirmed reports of an attack on a person. Now, is alligator gar edible? 
It is. Um, actually, before we started importing cod and things from the ocean, uh -huh. alligator gar and other gar species were a major food source for a lot of these areas. And still in the south, they are. Mm -hmm. well, I'm from the south, and I'd never heard of it. <laughs> well, I think Texas. Maybe it had another name. Texas and Louisiana and areas like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. Mississippi, Mississippi seem to be yeah. where they are more. Does it go by the name rockfish by any chance? I have not heard that one. Because I remember a very ugly looking fish in the <laughs> south. Of I wonder if that was an alligator gar that I had years ago. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but it was. It had the little, now that I think about, you know, the little back, the little jagged back. Mm -hmm. so what, a, what else, anything, other interesting facts and information that you can give us about the alligator gar that we haven't mentioned yet? Um, some of the what I find personally interesting yeah. about these fish, uh, they actually have a forked tongue okay. and both lobes are prehensile, so they use that to manipulate the food before they swallow it. Okay. Um, their scales are a primitive scale and they're actually diamond shaped. Uh, this serves as almost a chainmail armor around them. So they're actually a lot tougher than a lot of the other fish. Uh -huh. And they also have a, what's called a hetero, modified heterocircle tail. It's similar to that that you find in sharks where the spine actually protrudes into the tail a little bit, providing a little bit more strength. Oh. Sounds like a biologist's dream. <laughs> <laughs> they are pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, from a, from a biological point of view. Well, I tell you, we were getting a real education about yes, them. Yes, we and, are. And as, as Brad began talking, we had a fish of the, uh, excuse me, a picture of the uh, fish up on the screen. Oh, that good. It good. is a... Um, imposing looking fish. Yes it is. <laughs> but we want to stop now and take a uh, short break and listen a bit to another happy tale. This is about a sweet little cat named PJ. So give a listen. I think you'll enjoy it. This is a picture of Marvin, Smoke, and PJ in the basket. This, of course, is during the day while Dude is away. PJ is the chocolate Siamese and mother to all the other cats. She's also the oldest. We got PJ in February of 1999. PJ patiently looks after all of the other cats, bathes them, and snuggles up to them when they aren't feeling well. She even comes and snuggles up to her humans when they aren't feeling well. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that uh, wonderful little tale about PJ. And we've been talking about the alligator gar with Brad Richardson, and we've heard about the silver carp from uh, Chase Gilbert. Um, one other thing I'd like to just to finish up on the uh, alligator gar. If our viewers want to get more information about it, how can they uh, uh, find it up on the web, Brad? Um, again, fishbase.org is a great okay. place to find it. Um, you can go in there and search, I believe. Pretty much all the gar species are in there, so you can learn a little bit about all of them. And if you are on Facebook, there's actually a page that's dedicated just to primitive fishes. Oh. So you can learn about gar as well as a lot of the others. So. Oh, okay. Silver carp don't have a page on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, they probably will before long. <laughs> oh. Well, is there any additional things that you'd like to add about the alligator gar that we haven't hit yeah, on Yeah, we're, we're getting quite an education. I'm <laughs> sitting over here like, like a student going, ah. <laughs> Uh, I just, I hope people remember that they are a native fish, they're supposed to be here, mm -hmm. and if we do keep them around, there's a good chance that a lot of the other fish species are going to benefit in the long run. Okay. Could you elaborate, how will, how will the other, by balancing out the, the species or what? Yeah, uh, because they feed on those other species, you're going to keep abundances low, so the fish, you may see a slight decline in the population, but the fish that are there are going to be bigger and better health and things of that nature. Okay. Now, if this fish has been around a long time, would it have a lot of pollutants or would it be more pure? Uh, because they feed on a little bit of everything, uh, okay. they are predators, but they don't necessarily feed on fish. They've been found to feed on just about everything. So there is a potential for some nutrients to be built up in their system, but just like any other fish, they're they're pretty healthy as far as meat goes. Well, I guess you've been around, what is, 120 million years. You, <laughs> you must have some good genes to survive or something. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll tell you, we're really uh, getting a, a lot of good information here today, and I think we're at a point where we'd like to ask each of you, what one or two points would you like our viewers to remember about the, uh, the fish that you've been talking about? Chase, we'll start with you. Um, Probably, you know, this fish is extremely abundant, produces tons of offspring twice yearly, 20 to, you know, I mean, 200 to 300,000 eggs twice a year. So the fish is very abundant. It's a great, 
it's a great food item for people all over the globe and there's no exception here I think it could be a great food source for people um, and I would think with everything I, as a personal interest I think everything you should always respect it but um, they are they're not extremely dangerous except in the video that you saw <laughs> <laughs> but um, everything should be respected but they are they are an interesting creature that it's just not supposed to be here. Uh -huh. for, the, for the love of this planet is what you're saying, right? Right. Okay. And Brad, what would you like to comment on, uh, have our viewers remember about the alligator gar? Um, again, they are a native species, mm -hmm. so uh, any bad rap that comes with them should be pretty well forgotten. They were forgotten. First. They were. So a lot of the species that we have here were co-evolved with them, so they're not just going to decimate everything. And hopefully they can serve as some type of biocontrol for the Asian carp if we get lucky. Okay. That will be interesting to see how the two may mesh together, if you will. It would be and interesting uh, to see how maybe the uh, seafood menus might be tweaked a little bit in the future, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, maybe there will be an alligator gar kitchen or a silver carp kitchen <laughs> as opposed to the catfish kitchen. <laughs> so, Some you know, entrepreneur out there, uh, maybe one of these two might uh, mm -hmm. evolve into mm -hmm. that. So. <laughs> well, I'll tell, I'll tell you, you fellows have really brought us some excellent and in interesting information this afternoon. We'd like to thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to uh, uh, spend the time with us and tell us about these two interests. i would never heard of either so one much. of them. Yes. I mean, this is, you've just poured a lot of information mm -hmm. into me that I was not mm -hmm. aware of. And, you know, I'm from this area in western Kentucky, so. Well, I yeah. think I speak for both of us when I say that we're always eager to talk about fish. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, we can always have a part two in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Me. Anyway, and best of luck to the two of you yes, in your studies. Yes, your research your... at Murray State uh, University. Uh, I know uh, it's a very good university, and uh, it's good to know that the what the aquatics department mm -hmm. is on to the local problems. That you know, mm -hmm. this certainly has some very pragmatic uses. You know, so we're we're very proud to know that the the work is going on here locally. Yes. Well, Darlene. I can't believe Greg is it that time again. It is. Uh, listen, time just passes when you're having fun, doesn't it? Well, and when you're learning the lots oh, of interesting things. When you're learning, things. too. That's Ab right. Absolutely. So let's uh, remind our viewers what we tell them every time. Give your pet a little extra love today and, and every day. day. See you next time. Take care of those fish. <laughs> Bye.